Okay, this is the notes uh, for solving polynomials day two. So in the last lesson, we just solved some, you know, basic polynomials, one where you might have to, you know, factor and, and then um, solve those polynomials, one that which you could just put it in your graphing calculator if the calculator gave you all of the solutions as whole numbers then you could just write the solutions down you didn't need to do any work but then we went into problems where <clears throat> you know it may have only given you one solution and then uh, you had to you know then put it into uh, through um, synthetic division and then go from there and you know either doing quadratic formula if you had a quadratic or use grouping if you had uh, a cubic with four terms what we're going to find out in this lesson is <clears throat> now uh, some of your solutions uh, could be imaginary just like they were in quadratics so in some cases with quadratics you had um, parabolas that never cross the x-axis so if you remember if it crossed the x-axis then they were real solutions but if they didn't cross the x-axis they were imaginary solutions or solutions that had an i and so <clears throat> excuse me there's a what is called the fundamental theorem of algebra but basically it says and we have talked about this remember that the highest exponent will always tell you how many solutions there are now that's <clears throat> really important because when we go to look at the graph of this equation you'll see that it only crosses the x-axis one time now we do know that there are three solutions so what this tells us is that only one of the solution is solutions are real that means that the other two solutions that we have must be imaginary and so that's what it states here, only one real solution, because it only crosses at one point right here. The other two solutions would be imaginary. Now, look at this one, this quadratic here. We also see that it should have three solutions, but we do see that it crosses the x-axis in three different places. So this, all of these three solutions would be real numbers. And so <clears throat> when looking at the graph, you want to look at... Uh, you know, and see what kind of solutions am I going to get, uh, how many real solutions and how many imaginary solutions I'm going to get. So let's look at um, some of these examples. In the first one here, we're going to go ahead and solve this. So what you want to do is put the, the equation into your graphing calculator, and I'm going to do that. And pardon me here, but I have to... Uh, I didn't set this up ahead of time, so should have should have done that. Shout out to uh, Minnesota. Thanks for letting us use your graphing calculator. So let's put this back. Slide that over. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this in our graphing calculator. Y equals, so we have X to the fourth minus 3x to the third plus 6x squared plus 2x minus 60. And so let's look at this graph. And so what it looks like is <clears throat> I'm going to only have two solutions. Now we can zoom out just to you know, just to see. Yeah, it does look like it only uh, crosses in two different places. Now I know from the power here that I'm going to have four solutions. So when it crosses only two in two places, that means that two of my solutions will be real and two solutions uh, may be imaginary. And so we can find those. So first of all, let's look at the table so we can find one of our solutions. So it looks like we have uh, an answer at negative two or three. Now I told you guys to choose one of the solutions uh, and work with it in synthetic division. You don't wanna, you don't wanna write down both of them uh, because then if you find the same solution again later on, you may double it 
uh, and, and it just gets confusing. So just pick one and go from there. I like positive numbers, so I'm going to go with 3. So that's all I need that calculator for. For now, uh, I'm going to do 3 and see what happens here. Uh, I'm not missing any terms, so this should be pretty quick and easy. Uh, negative x to the or 1x to the 4th, negative 3, x to the third, 6x squared, 2x, and minus 60. Run this through synthetic division. 1 times 3 is 3, negative 3 and 3 is 0, 0 times 3 is 0, 6 and 0 is 6, 6 times 3 is 18, 20, or 2 and 18 is uh, 20, 20 times 3 is 60. And so uh, a couple reasons here, negative 60 and 60 is 0. This does verify that uh, 3 is a solution, but more importantly, it shortens it now. So instead of having an x to the fourth, <clears throat> I actually have uh, an x, an x to the second. And so, or an x to the third, sorry. Uh, because it started off as x to the fourth, I know now my answer is going to be an x to the third. So I have one x to the third. I don't have an x squared because it's zero. And so I move on to uh, 6x plus 20. Now, unfortunately, with this problem here, I can't do grouping. There's not four terms, and so I can't do grouping here. So what, what, how, do we, uh, <laughs> how do we figure out this? So what you can do in this situation if you can't do grouping, and it's not a quadratic because it's not x squared, so I can't do a quadratic, that other solution um, that you found, that other solution you can use. So this is where that other solution can come in handy. So 3 was an answer. Uh, I believe that here that um, negative 2 was an answer. So what we can do is use the other solution and run it through synthetic division for this one. So we don't have to do it in the original one. We can do it in the one that we just made. So I'm going to do that. Uh, 1 for the x to the third. I don't have an x squared. You're essentially just copying what's, um, you know, what's right here. Uh, and then you have a 6x and then a 20. And so I'm going to run this through synthetic division. 1 times negative 2, negative 2, 0, negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Uh, 6 and 4 is 10. 10 and negative 2 is negative 20. And so, yes, the negative 2 is also a solution. But more importantly now, instead of we went from a from a x to the fourth to an x to the third, and now we go to an x squared. So this is an x squared. So I have 1x squared minus 2x plus 10. And so now, you know, the best thing here is that I get it to a quadratic. And a quadratic, I can use uh, the quadratic formula. So I already know that 3 is a solution and negative 2 is a solution. So I'm going to use quadratic formula with this final piece here to find the other two solutions, as I know I have 4. So <clears throat> the quadratic formula is x equals the opposite of b, which in this case is positive 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which negative 2 squared is 4, <clears throat> yeah. uh, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 10, all over 2 times a, or 2 times 1 is 2. Now we're going to do our discriminant first, this piece right here, we're going to do 4 minus so let's see, I have uh, 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4 times 1 times 10 is actually negative 36. Now, we knew this was going to happen, okay? Remember, uh, there were two solutions. We knew we should have 4, but only two of them crossed the x-axis. So I knew that the other two must be imaginary solutions. And so we can see here that we're going to get imaginary solutions with that negative radical. Uh, by... Uh, putting an i out front, that will change the radical to a 
positive 36. And I do know the square root of 36. Uh, square root of 36, it's a, it's a nice perfect square. It's 6. So it's 2 plus or minus uh, i times 6, or 6i six over 2. Now, that technically is your final answer there. You could reduce it if you want to, but that's not really important for this. But here's all four of my solutions. 3, negative 2, and this counts as two solutions as uh, there is a plus or a minus there. So 2 plus 6i over 2 and 2 minus 6i over 2. And that's how we deal with complex solutions. So you notice here, nothing really changes. You're still doing the same thing. Uh, the only thing is you're going to get an i in here. So uh, we, can, we can do another one here. Uh, let's just go ahead and do number 2 and see what happens. This is a cubic. So with the cubic, again, um, we want to plug this into our graphing calculator and see what our solutions are. I'm going to go ahead and bring back our calculator. There we go. And go ahead and plug this into our graphing calculator. So I have uh, x to the third minus 3x squared minus 15x and then plus 125. And so we can graph this. And here, once again, um, <laughs> now we can zoom out just to make sure, but it looks like I only see one solution crossing the x-axis. Uh, so let's zoom out just to, oh, where am I going? Just to see. Yeah, <laughs> there's, uh, it only crosses in one place. So uh, what that tells me, Couple things you need to, to need to be able to figure out here is I should have three solutions, um, but because I only see one time crossing the x axis, um, I I I know that I have one solution that is real. Uh, the other two solutions must be imaginary, and so let's see if we can find that one solution. So we go to our table, and let's see here where is it? There it is. So you can go up and down on the table just to try to find it up and down, see where you find that zero. Looks like that zero is at negative five. So negative five is our only real solution. So uh, I know that negative five, and I don't need the calculator anymore. I don't, uh, negative five is our real solution. So I'm gonna run it through synthetic division. One, negative three, negative 15, and 125. I have all the terms. So that should be that. Uh, run synthetic division, uh, 1 times negative 5, negative 5, negative 3, negative 5 is negative 8, negative 8 times negative 5 is 40, negative uh, 15 and 40 is 25, and then 25 times negative 5 is negative 125, so yes, uh, negative 5 is a solution, though we already knew that because our calculator told us. And so what I have left now is a quadratic. Since it started off as a cubic, I now have a quadratic. So this will be 1x squared, or just x squared, minus 8x plus, oops, plus 25. Uh, from there, uh, with a quadratic, we can just use quadratic formula. And so I'm going to do quadratic formula. x equals opposite of b, so 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 8 squared is 64, minus 4 times a times c. And so here, uh, I'm all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 1, which is 2. So when I do this one, uh, I'm going to do the discriminant here first, 64 uh, minus 4 times 1 times 25, ends up being negative 36, so it ends up actually being the same thing as the last one. We can change that by placing an i out front. That will remove the negative, and so uh, this is x equals, I don't need that twice, uh, 8 plus or minus i, uh, square root of 36 is 6, um, so it would be i times 6, or 6i. Six over 2. Again, I'm not concerned with reducing uh, that because that is a solution, and so there's all three of your solutions.
you have negative 5 up here and then 8 plus or minus. Because of the plus or minus, that, uh, that means that there's two solutions there. And so now you have all three solutions. And so this, I just want to show you what we do uh, when you get complex solutions like that. So to recap here, we have the fundamental theorem of algebra, which basically states that whatever the exponent is, is how many solutions you have. And when you look at the graph, if you only see it cro crossing you know, one time when you should have three solutions, that means that one, only one solution is real. The other two must be imaginary. Um, the last thing that we're going to go over here is how to write our own polynomial given information. This is relatively um, simple once you get the hang of it. I don't know if I have any other examples, but we'll definitely go over other examples uh, in class. But uh, basically, we work our, we work backwards. So in, in this type of problem, they give you the solutions. They say, hey, the solutions are negative 4, 1, and 7. What's the function? What's the polynomial function? And so you have to um, just understand that when they give you solutions, you have to think about this. With quadratics, when we were dealing with quadratics, if they gave you that x equals you know, 5 and negative 2, you have to remember how you would get there. If I were factoring, let's say I was factoring uh, you know, x squared plus 3x minus 10. If I were factoring that, what numbers, oops, sorry, what, uh, multiply to be negative 10 and add to be 3. Multiply to be negative 10 and add to be 3. Uh, well, it would be positive 5, positive 5 and negative 2, plus 5 and negative 2. And so if I were solving this, because it's equal to 0, if I were solving this, I would have to set them equal to 0. And then like x plus 5 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, and so x would equal negative 5, and x would equal positive 2, which is what I have right here. Actually, I have the opposite. So I kind of did that backwards. Let's make this uh, negative 5 and positive 2. So um, if those are the solutions, you're basically going, instead of going this way, you know, you're going this way. So when we have our solutions, we can just put these back in factored form by simply just changing their signs. So notice how the negative 5 goes back into factored form by changing its sign and then just putting x plus 5. The positive 2, uh, you know, goes back into factored form by simply just putting it back here and changing the signs. So we can do the same thing with polynomials by just simply putting them back in factored form. So four, negative four, negative four, one, and seven, we can just put it back in factored form as x plus four. Positive one would be x minus one. 7 would be x minus 7. And <clears throat> we just put that in a factored form and, and then work our way backwards. So just keep, just multiply uh, all these terms together. And this is why we do this early on in the unit is because it comes up right here. We have to multiply these. And so there's three of them. So I can only multiply two at a time. We've already done this example um, in a previous unit or previous section. So I'm going to multiply x times x, x squared, x times negative 1, negative x, 4 times x, 4 times negative 1. I'll combine like terms. So I get x squared plus 3x minus 4. And then bring down the x minus 7. Multiply these. x squared times x is x to the third x squared times negative 7, 3x times x, 3x times negative 7, negative 4 times x, and negative 4 times 7. So, now we can combine like terms, and so I get x to the third 
negative 7x squared plus 3x squared is negative 4x squared. Negative 21x and negative 4x is negative 25x and then negative 28. And there you go. You get the equation that it once was. Now, we can't stop quite yet because we have to finish checking everything. So it gave us the solutions, but let's make sure everything checks out. So it says we have to write a polynomial function. Yep, check. We got the polynomial function. Check. Uh, at least a degree that of of least degree that has a rational has rational coefficients. Not I mean that's just means that they're they could be fractions or whatever. Has a leading coefficient of one. Yep, a leading coefficient of one, and given the zeros. Now, one thing you may see is like, what if it what if it said that there was a leading coefficient of two? Okay, well, how do we deal with that when it's a leading coefficient of two, when our leading coefficient is not two? Well, if if it needs to be two and it's not two, just all you have to do is just simply just multiply everything by two, and you can fix it. So. 2 times that would be 2x to the third, and then negative 8x squared, and then uh, negative 50x, and negative 56. And so now you get the exact same thing with a coefficient of 2. But that's not, that's not what it asked for. It asked for a leading coefficient of 1, which it is. So this would be the polynomial. And we'll definitely go over a couple more examples of that for sure, especially on the day when you'd be taking this quiz. So uh, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions.